Many things are special about the Clark Fork River Delta. First, its location on the flyway for migrating waterfowl and songbirds, as well as um, it's nestled between two uh, mountain ranges, and so it allows connectivity from lowlands to highlands. And it's also a sacred place for many of the tribes in the areas, especially the Kalispell tribe. The Clark Fork Delta holds specific and very meaningful uh, history to the Kalispell people in that it is their genesis location. That is the place where the Kalispell believe they were born from the water to the animal people that would eventually became Kalispell. They camped there, they played there, they summered there, they collected, fished. There's several components that are contributing to the the loss of the delta. One is that the dams upstream prevent the river from depositing more sediment, which allows islands to be maintained, if nothing else, but at least in an ideal situation, they grow and get larger as that sediment is deposited and the river enters the lake. And then the way that the water levels are managed, when they bring the water levels down, the wave action from the lake and the river action ends up letting the banks of these islands drop off and fall into the river. Deltas represent a very complicated uh, system. Um, they're both affected, their, their erosion and deposition and creation uh, is, is really affected by both river processes and lake processes. The animals and the migrating songbirds and waterfowl, they go to the Clark Fork Delta. They're programmed to go there and they're not programmed to go 100 miles to the west where we might have another mitigation parcel for them. This is where they go. I guess the stars aligned and everyone was interested. We were able to find the money and it's good to see construction ongoing. It's great to see this project underway. I'm real excited about the the uh, tour I've had today, the on-the-ground uh, look at things for the first time under construction. Clark Fork Settlement Agreement was developed as part of our relicensing process and it addresses everything from fish and wildlife to water quality, recreation, land management, cultural resources. Ultimately, because of the number of partners that are involved, it, it makes it that much more of a quality project. Our main goal is to stabilize and protect what is existing and then dig in some deeper areas and fill in that in so that we get it high enough that, we, that it can support vegetation and actually reestablishing or rebuilding some of these sections of the delta. In terms of the erosion, we're uh, doing some rock protection uh, with vegetation embedded in it and then Alongside the river sections, we'll do some Benway weirs and some also some rock protection with some logs embedded in, in the rock protection. And then as far as the restoration part is mainly building areas back up to above summer pool to where we can get the plants and shrubs and trees to be reestablished in areas. What's required as far as earth moving, bringing in fill, taking out fill to make some of the reservoirs for water to last longer on these islands throughout the summer, it's going to look like mud and rock and gravel. But once the plant community is given a chance to establish, I think that uh, a more aesthetic result will, will come more quickly than people might expect. So we wake up with the sun, we wake up at 5.30 a.m. and we have a half an hour to get ready for work, which starts at 6. We take a boat out to work. It's really rewarding to do the work we're doing because we're changing the world, basically, at least for this area. Like, we're not just doing this for human benefit, we're doing it to help everything.
Um, we love doing projects like this. Um, it's part of our citizenship and we like to get out in the community and um, get, get our hands dirty. The idea that we were losing so many acres a year out here um, really hit home with a lot of our kids. I think the kids understand that in a few years down the road, this is gonna be something that they can be proud of and bring maybe even their own kids to it and, and see what we've done. Community projects are one of my favorite things. Just coming and being outside and getting my hands dirty is just awesome. This area is super special to my whole family. I've grown up here. It's been a big part of my life. Uh, growing up here, I mean, every year I come out and go kayaking and boating out here, so it means a lot to me. In you know, 20 years, 30 years, we'll be able to come back and see how all this effort we put in has uh, improve the, the ecosystem. So I'm here today with members of the Northwest Youth Corps and uh, they're a group that encourages young people to get out and work in the outdoors. Well, what I'm looking at here is uh, year two of the project. And what's really encouraging to me is I can see a diversity of, of grasses and we have lupin and yarrow coming in, which is really encouraging. And I'm seeing a lot of recruitment of native species, I'm, I'm really encouraged. To me, it's a model project, and if, if we could achieve this type of result with our projects around the region, I think the ratepayers and Bonneville Power should be very, very pleased. Well, I think the long-term benefits to everyone in general is that we will continue to have a delta where you can recreate, where wildlife and fish will be successful, and a VISTA and Bonneville Power Administration will meet their mitigation responsibilities by implementing this project. So I think it's a win-win for everyone, actually. It's a big project, but at the end of the day, we have community ownership in it. We've got agency ownership in it amongst various partners. We've got industry ownership in it. So it's, a lot of people can look at this and do look at this with a lot of pride. It's really gratifying to see a project of this scope happen the way it's happened and know that we're, my grandkids are gonna be able to enjoy the Delta the way that, that I've enjoyed it with my son.